Hey everybody, this is Dave with Alum House Sound. Today we're gonna to start talking about how to get X32 Edit connected to your mixing console. Now, a lot of times I'm working remotely with clients across Zoom. You're in different states, different countries, different parts of the world, which is really exciting to me. But today we wanna to help you get everything set up on the computer, and that way we've got a great session. Now you can obviously use this if we're not doing a session together. This will help you get X32 Edit installed, help get your console connected to a network that you can remotely control it, even with an iPad or an iPhone app or some other tablet app that may be beneficial to you. So let's go ahead and roll the intro clip, and then we'll dive into all the settings for you. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get X32 Edit downloaded. So we're gonna come up to a browser and we're going to go to behringer.com. In the top right, we can search for X32 and without hitting the enter button, you're gonna get some options that come up. So I'm gonna click on the first one here, the full size X32. And on the right hand side of the screen, uh, you may have to scroll down, but on the right hand side of the screen, we can see software if we expand that so you can see here a number of different pieces of software. There are some nice things. If you're on a Windows machine, do note that you need this XUSB audio driver. Uh, I can see they've got two versions. I'm currently using the 4.59 on any Windows machine. Uh, but what we're here to get is the X32 Edit. Now you can see that they have four different options. For me, I'm on a Mac, so I'll click on Mac 4.3. I will download this. Once that's completed, you can either click it down here in the bottom or you can navigate to wherever your downloads are. Typically on a Mac, if we come in here, we can click on downloads and then we could see the X32 edit here. We can double click it. It'll open it up and the X32 edit here, this is the actual application. This is all you need as an application is X32 edit. So when we double click it, it should attempt to open up. You may have to initiate some security settings or allow it depending on your machine. But once it opens up, you'll see uh, something that looks different than this. This is actually a scene because I've already got this installed, but you'll see an interface that looks something like this. And if we look in the top, it says not connected, meaning this is just the application. It's a standalone application. It is not connected to a console at this time. So the next step to do is to attach this to a console. So let's get that connected. So to begin, we need to connect to the remote control section on the back of the console. We'll stick a regular Internet Cat5 cable into the Ethernet port. And then we want to move on to our router. This would be your standard router and just connect like any other computer into an available slot. Now that we have our hard connections made, we're gonna go back to X32 Edit. Click the Setup button in the top right, and now we can look at the IP address of our computer, and that will help us understand the network style that we're on. We need to write this down or have it accessible. In my case, mine starts with 192.168. Let's take that IP address now and move back to the console, and we'll get it set up to make our final connections. So here we are back at the console. We're going to go ahead and click the Setup button on the right side of the screen, and then we're going to page over to the Network tab. Once we're at the Network tab, there's a button in the bottom left called DHCP. Uh, that will set some automatic parameters if it's lit up orange, but what we want to do is actually push it so that we can get to the customized settings. Here we can use the encoder knobs at the bottom to enter an IP address. Now we want to start out the same as you might see here on the screen and according to the IP address that we got from your computer within X32 Edit. So for me, I'm going to use the encoder knobs and I'm going to make sure that I have 192.168.1.1.1. Entered in. 101 is usually a very common available uh, option and so we can use 101 in here and make sure that we're not impeding any other computers. Once we've gotten to this section you can use the first encoder knob to mouse down to the subnet mask and here we want to use the encoders again to make sure that we enter 
dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. These numbers are going to be in the description as well to help you out uh, if you're not familiar with these types of settings. But at the very bottom, uh, you will see a third option which does not need to be entered. The gateway uh, that could be zero dot zero dot zero or one dot one dot one dot one. At the end, do click the assign button on the bottom right, and that will lock everything in for us. So at this point, we've got an IP address logged into our console. We've connected with the network cable. And what we want to do now is go back up to the top right and hit setup. And when the window pops up, you should see a option here with a console, which is going to have the same IP address as what we've entered in. So for me, I see 192.168.1.101. And if you don't see that, you might hit the rescan button. Now we need to talk about the connection. So when we hit connect, we've got two options here, either one from the mixer to the PC or the other from the PC to the mixer. Now we have a scene on our console and we're trying to get it onto the computer. So we want to make sure that mixer to PC is selected. When we hit connect, we're going to get that option again. Do make sure that you hit mixer to PC. Otherwise your scene will be erased on your console. And if you don't have it saved, that's a bad day. So when we hit this button, we're going to see all the connections underneath us uh, reset that will just take on the look and settings of the console and here everything is ready to go so now we can close out of this window and we can start to make changes on our console if we move faders we will see that adjusted on the console as well and all of the settings will work as expected now there is an option for an iPad app which can connect again wirelessly across your network to the computer and that will have full functionality and there is an iPhone app as well. That phone app will only adjust mix buses, which are typically used for mixing monitors if you're using mix buses for monitors. All right, so it's not that complicated, but obviously there are some numbers involved in this and a couple settings that we need to get uh, adjusted and made sure that they're proper so that you can control the computer. And if I'm helping you remotely, I can then control the computer just across Zoom. So it's a really fascinating time with technology and I love that we're able to do this remotely. Well, if you found this video helpful, please do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We are just over 9,000 subscribers on our way to 10,000 and that's really, really exciting. I'm happy to be able to influence and, and, and give value to you guys uh, no matter where you are in the world. Well, if you've got questions, put those in the comments section. I'm always answering questions and we will be doing another Q&A video coming up soon enough. Well, thanks so much. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.